Yes, and to cap it all, it was raining when we met Sue and Martin starting their car for the ferry. This was my most anxious moment. This was the start of our trip to drive across Denmark into southern Sweden. Not less was the fact that we had at last minute had to bring a hurriedly prepared car that was nearly 90 years old and I had only driven it a mile or so and was making some funny noises. We met up with the rest of our party, all Model T Ford registered members. After a good night's sleep, with the sun shining in the morning, things looked a bit better when we berthed at Esberg for our drive across Denmark. Len and Veronica Crane were having a misfiring problem with their 1914 Model T Ford car, so the whole convoy stopped. This gave me time to have a look around my car too, see if anything had gone wrong or had fallen off. But it was all there, so far, so good. The others were dealing with Len's car. After we'd gone over the 11 kilometre causeway and bridge joining Denmark to Sweden, we all parked up and prepared for a little celebration. Black as Glog Slot lies in a narrow piece of land between two large lakes and was originally a monastery built about 1250 and was used as such until 1537 when it became a Danish stately home. By 1680 it had become the property of the Swedish crown and was used for most of the time as a garrison until 1818 when it became the royal summer residence. This was to be our rally centre. Eva and Bertel had welcomed us and showed us to our quarters, some in the castle itself, others being in what we refer to as the mill. All our cars were parked in the centre of the castle. In the afternoon we had a short drive to Tossersberger Ham, a small fishing village on the end of a peninsula into the Baltic Sea. kilometers we stopped at a moated castle, Trolley Lungebly Slot, for a walkabout.
down. Mark Gregory's car was leaking oil out of his rear axle, probably due to the fact the car was travelling on the wrong side of the road. Anyway, it was a good excuse to get the spanners out and all pitch in. Bend it in. Knock it in. What, just like... Yeah. Okay. yeah. What do you want? Harry. <laughs> 100%. On Friday, Alex and Pauline gave us a ride in his 1913 Model T to give my car a rest. <laughs> this time, for a change, they took us down some narrow dirt roads, probably just the sort of roads that these cars were originally used on. As Fords are now the owners of Volvo, it was appropriate that we should visit their museum at Jamslog. As Sweden is mostly forest, it was quite logical that they had found a way of making the vehicle run on wood. Our next port of call was Lexenbus, evidently a popular place for fly fishing. However, the waters were running much too fast and was probably out of season anyway. The following day we assembled in the local town of Christianstad. This is a quiet, neat and tidy town with its park and theatre. Some went shopping while we just took in the atmosphere.
After a pleasant drive through level countryside, we arrived at Bertel and Eva's home. Angus was there to help us and we were well catered for. The following day everybody motored south along the Baltic Sea, coming back to dinner in the Great Hall of the Castle. So after our goodbyes we headed back across Denmark and to the ferry home. <laughs>